Okay, welcome back PSRT3 students. It's nice to be back again in our virtual classroom. So this morning we are going to discuss the cardinal principles of radiation protection. But before that, alalahanin muna natin ang mga pinag-usapan natin last week. So kailangan meron muna tayo, may mga bagay muna tayong kailangan balikan sana all. So as you can see in the right side of your monitor, so last week we have discussed or we have tackled all about the fundamental principles of radiation protection in which we said there are three fundamental principles of radiation protection and most of them are byproducts due to the fatality or the first casualty of radiation-induced uh, accident in the person of Clarence Daly. So we have summarized the th cardinal principle. Number one is justification. So we said that um, uh, in this principle, um, it should be that the benefit or merits should outweigh the radiation risk. So when we say justification, it should be that the introduction of or practice involving radiation shall be adapted unless its introduction produces a positive net benefit, which is evidently or it is practiced when, uh, of course, we have to ask uh, uh, x-ray request from the attending physician of the patient as part of justification. Okay, next we said that there is the principle of optimization wherein the risk outweighs the benefit. So we said that optimization is sometimes called the Alara principle or as low as reasonably achievable. So uh, we said here that um, uh, in consideration of economic and social factors, strive to reduce individual's exposure doses and number of exposed people as low as reasonably achievable. Sometimes we have to uh, uh, elicit a good quality radiograph to uh, practice the uh, ALARA principle or the optimization. So we have to optimize our quality. Okay, so next we have the application of dose limit in which according to the ICRP principle or uh, the, the limit for occupational exposure is uh, 100 millisievert per 5 years average of 5 years average and 50 millisievert for specific one year and for public this is specified as 1 millisievert per year so uh, ayun. this morning we are going to discuss the cardinal principles of radiation protection let us see how this one differs from the uh, fundamental principles of radiation protection. Okay. Sige. Allow me to read the introduction before we start the cardinal principles of radiation protection. So, providing radiation protection for health workers or workers and the public is the practice of health physics. So health physics design, cal calculate, and design barriers and develop administrative protocols to maintain radiation exposure as low as reasonably achievable. So kagabi nga, nag kami ng pamangkin ko since he's taking up engineering. Sabi ko, why not take up, um, why not proceed uh, to uh, radiation physics para in other, wor uh, in other way around, in the future you will become one of the health physicists. Okay, so parang ganun din. Parang ganun yung may envision ko sa inyo. If you want to pursue this career as health physicist, so you can. So ano yung magiging role ng health physics? So it, we are concerned with the providing occupational radiation protection and minimizing radiation dose to the public. So here we have to balance or we have to uh, ensure the delivery of radiation as safety towards Workers, of course, and of course to the public. So, na, na mentioned natin the last time that um, sa, mo, mas maliit yung uh, up dose limit ng public kasi nga, um, as workers, it is expected that we are more educated with the safe use of radiation. Kaya, mas mataas yung uh, limit natin as, uh, di ba, 100 millisievert uh, per 5 years or average of 5 years. So a health physicist is concerned with the research, teaching, or operational aspects of radiation safety. As we all know, due to the advent or the death of Clarence Daly, so uh, 
issues about uh, radiation safety has been an emerging uh, concerns in our society. Kaya nga, kaila, uh, there are researches or uh, uh, teaching or educating people with the safety or radiation safety. Lalo na ngayon, maraming kumakalat na mga scam at fake news uh, sa Facebook. Kung mapansin nyo, ganun-ganun, every now and then, may mga balita all about radiation, kesyo papasok na daw sa Pilipinas, ganun, na kailangan, we have to close all the windows, put the swab and everything. So, we have to educate people. And as radiologic technologist or future radiologic technologist, kailangan um, alam natin how to deal with the safe use of radiation. Before, we have discussed the fundamentals. And now, we are going to... Um, Uh, we, we are going to talk all about the uh, cardinal principles of radiation. Sabi natin, iba siya kaysa sa fundamentals. Okay, so uh, this COVID-19 pandemic somehow inculcated three important aspects of our protection. So, time, distance, and shielding. So, dahil takot tayo kay coronavirus, so naging aware tayo when it comes to time. Meron tayong tinatawag na 14-day quarantine. Um, personally, kaya natatakot pa ako nag mag-travel, mag-report sa office. Sorry to say, kasi I'm afraid that I will be subject to 14-day quarantine when I arrive to Katarman. But uh, thanks to the Municipal Interagency Task Force, na nag-advise sa akin, no need na for quarantine since Tacloban or Leyte in general is of low risk category. So, uh, what's the purpose of uh, imposing the 14-day quarantine? Di ba, um, researches uh, since COVID-19 is new in the literature of medicine. So, there are findings that uh, a person who is considered once uh, sim- asymptomatic will develop symptoms within 14 days. Kaya, kuna-quarantine muna siya when he is suspected, especially when uh, that person came from uh, high-risk municipalities or areas. So, again, we have, we, that's, the time is part of our protection to COVID-19 with, uh, especially when we are talking about the 14-day quarantine. Next, we have been aware about the distancing. Diba? Kaya nga, wala, no touch muna tayo sa mga love life, love life, di ba? Okay, because we are advised as much as possible, we are to have a physical and social distancing of about 1 to 2 meters away. So, distance. Distance has been a protection to COVID-19, di ba? So, sabi nila, mas maliit yung chance to spread the virus kung may, uh, may medyo malayo tayo for a person uh, especially nowadays we are advised to consider each person na hindi natin kilala as a person who is uh, asymptomatic uh, mas maganda na lang yon na meron tayong mga tinatawag na safety measures okay so uh, yon so time distance and of course shielding hindi naman ako pauhulian no kailangan magmodel muna sa subject ko I'm not saying na carrier ako ng virus. Huwag naman sana. But, um, I am also practicing shielding as part of my protection to COVID-19. So, wear fa- face mask as much as possible. Face shield, especially when you are in, in the public. Okay. So, that's part of the time, distance, and shielding. Of course, we don't have to forget the hand washing and uh, okay, mga paglagay-lagay ng alcohol, pag-disinfect ng lugar. So, that, those are part of the uh, safety measures to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so time, distance, and shielding. So, these three aspects are also applicable in the field of radiology. So, in health physics, activities in radiology is designed to minimize the radiation exposure of patients and personnel. So, we have the t- uh, three cardinal principles of radiation protection developed for nuclear activities. Time, distance, and shielding will find equally useful application in diagnostic radiology. So, time, distance, and shielding. And we have to get to know about them in this section. So, una, we have to discuss all about the time. So, with respect to radiation protection, we have to minimize the time of exposure. 
kung kayo nag enjoy kayo, sabi nyo sa love life nyo, kailangan may moment kayo with your loved ones, pero ibahin nyo sa radiation protection. The, the, the more that you stay in a radioactive source, the higher is your radiation dose. Ganun lang yun, class. If you have to picture out, kung hindi tayo pumunta sa lugar na yun, eh, hindi tayo na-expose. Pero kung nagstay tayo ng matagal sa lugar na yun na may uh, radiation pala, nagtagal tayo don so mas mataas yung chance ng radiation sa atin. So it says here that the radi- radiation dose to an individual is directly related to the duration of radiation exposure. If the time during which one is exposed to radiation is doubled, of course, the radiation will be doubled. So we have our working time equation. Ice here. So, we have exposure equals exposure rate multiplied by time. So, X equals X rate times time. So, sa mga bitter na naman dyan, sasabihin nyo, sir, ba't nandyan na naman sa X? So, X is a letter or a symbol for exposure. So, meron pa ditong isang X, pero this time, meron siyang round sa taas. So, that is to designate exposure rate. Si exposure, usually, wala siyang kasamang unit ng time. Pero si exposure rate, meron na siyang kasamang time. Kung ayaw nyo, sa X nyo, doon kayo sa ikaid letter D. D or dose equals, no, no, equals dose rate. Dose rate yung D at capital letter D na may circle sa taas multiplied by time. So, pwede yung gamitin nyo. Pwedeng exposure, pwedeng dose, or dose rate. So, pwede yan. Basta, uh, we are talking about the working time equation. So, ganito yon. Okay, so, ayun na naman siya. May problem na naman tayo. Okay, so, uh, since we are talking about health physics, so, physics, di ba? Kailangan, may mathematics talaga partly, pero hindi naman... Don't you worry, this is um, easy lang naman sa inyo, chicken lang naman to sa inyo class. Okay, by the way, health physics, this is the heart of the our subject. So, this is RT315 again, this is radiation protection and um, nandito yung bulk ng discussion natin sa subject na to. Magpo-focus tayo kay time, kay distance at kay shielding. Okay, so going back to our sample problem. So, if an equivalent dose of 240 millisievert is received uniformly over a period of 3 hours, what is the dose rate? So, we have our given here. We have our variables. So, as you can see, we have 240 millisievert. So, paano natin siya i-designate? Is it uh, exposure, exposure rate, or time? So, di ba, sabi ko kanina, pag uh, may kasamang unit ng time, sas pwede natin siyang sabihin exposure rate or dose rate. Pero pag wala, kita nyo, millisievert, di ba? If you can still remember, that is a unit for dose equivalent. So, we can say that the given is exposure or dose. So, Mayroon pa ditong isang variable, uniformly over a period of 3 hours. So, 3 hours. Of course, that's the unit of time. So, we are going to find for the dose rate. So, based on our former slide, we have to use x equals x rate times time. But since we are looking for dose rate, we have to divide both sides with time. So, our equation will be x rate equals x divided by time or exposure rate equals exposure divided by time. So, substituting our exposure is 240 millisievert divided by 3 hours. So, that will give you 80 millisievert per hour. Okay, nakuha pa? Nakuha? So, sige. Now, th- uh, this time, I want you to get uh, a paper ball pen, tapos magsusolve tayo. No? Sige, let's ha- take this problem. Okay, so a laboratory technician is working with a radioactive source that gives off exposure rate of 75 microsievert per hour at his workstation. 
calculate how long the technician can work in the said source so that he will not exceed the daily exposure limit of 0.20 millisievert. So again, we have our variables here, 75 microsievert per hour. And then we have another variable here, 0.20 millisievert per hour. So what do you think? 75 microsievert per hour, is it a dose, a dose rate or time? And how about 0.20 millisievert? Is it a dose, dose rate or a time? Okay, uulitin ko na naman ha. Pag, uh, uh, once you see a, uh, a figure, mayroon siyang given na dose, like for example, dose equivalent or absorbed dose or exposure, ano? na may accompanying unit of time, so pwede na natin siyang sabihin may rate na siya. Exposure rate, dose rate, yon. Pero, pag makita nyo yung isang uh, variable, may, uh, may magnitude na siya at saka may unit ng dose, tapos wala naman siyang kasamang time, so pwede natin siyang sabihin exposure. So, in this problem, we can say 75 microsievert per hour is the exposure rate, and uh, 0.20 millisievert is our exposure. So, our equation, working time equation, again, class, is X equals or exposure equals exposure rate multiplied by time. So, in our problem, we are asked to calculate how long. So, gaano katagal. Oo, so, we are talking about the time. So, therefore, to find for the time, we have to divide divide both sides with exposure rate. So, our equation will be time equals exposure divided by exposure rate. Okay. So, um, substituting our exposure is 0.20 millisievert and our uh, exposure rate is 75 microsievert per hour. So, magtataka kayo, sir, bakit naging 0 0.075? Okay, so, um, as you can see, ma magkaiba yung unit niya, di ba? So, we have uh, microsievert per hour, at saka yung isa naman is millisievert per hour. So, we have, uh, we are going to have a uniform unit. So, which is which? Is it uh, microsievert per hour or millisievert, uh, microsievert or millisievert? So, pwede namang parehas, but since I am the lecturer, okay, so, una-una ko kasing napansin yung 75, so, I converted 75 microsievert per hour into millisievert. So, for every, um, for every millisievert, there are 1,000 microsievert, kaya naging 0 0.075 millisievert siya. But if you prefer to convert um, millisievert into microsievert, pwede din naman gawin nyo yun. Okay? So, um, the same result will be, uh, we will have, so, again, 0.2 millisievert divided by 0.75 millisievert per hour. So, what will be our answer? Sige nga. Okay. ta -da! Okay, so that will be 2.67 hours. So approximately 3 hours or 2.7 hours will the, uh, the technician can stay in the said source that uh, he will not exceed to the daily exposure of 0.20 millisievert. Okay class, nakuha po ba? Okay, so if you have questions, do not hesitate. You may comment it here in this video. And uh, alam niyo na yung iba-ibang platforms natin. Okay, so that's about time. So meaning, we have to minimize the time of exposure para mas uh, safe tayo to radiation. So we can do that naman, di ba? In, uh, in our, in the practice of radi radiology, di ba? Meron tayong, uh, uh, we can control time via the control console, di ba? Operating console. So we can manipulate our exposure time. Yan. Ano pa? Oh. Okay, so, ikaw mismo, so, uh, sa Sradtech, so, alam mo na yan. So, our key is to minimize the time of exposure so that the radiation dose will not be significant or lesser radiation dose. 
Next, we have maximize the distance. Okay. Kaya, may, may mga bitter na naman dyan. Sasabihin, sir, kasi pag mga long distance relationship, walang forever. Oh, hindi naman, hindi naman yung, yung point natin dyan is not about your relationship naman. It's all about radiation. So, maximize distance. So, as we can see in our figure, Jonah is manipulating the source of radiation. So, uh, in our radiography, we have standard uh, source to image receptor distances naman, di ba? So, for tabletop, or for backy procedure, out backy procedures, we have 40 inches SID or 100 centimeter. And for teleoradiography, chest radiography, it's dedicated to 72 inches or 180 centimeter SID. Okay, so in radiography, as the distance between the source of radiation and the person increases, radiation exposure decreases rapidly. So, mas maganda pala na... May distansya. Mas malayo yung source of radiation sa person involved in the radiation. So, the reverse is also true. That is the source gets nearer to the individual, exposure dose increases significantly. The closer, the higher. Oh, di ba? So, ganun lang yun. Okay. But do not be confused, class, ha? Kasi we have, uh, in radiography, we have the... Direct square law, the density and the distance in which, sabi natin, the closer the radiation source, nagblablock yung film. Uh -oh. But, ig-move natin further, mas nagwa-white na ang film. Iba yun. Uh -oh. Here, we're talking about the intensity, gaano kalakas ang radiation. So, uh, gamitin nyo na lang yung flashlight nyo sa bahay. Okay, so, uh, ilagay nyo malapit sa wall, di ba? mas malakas yung intensity ng light but if you move the flashlight further mas humihina yung light so that's uh, the, the 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 principle behind the distance and the intensity and we can recall using the inverse square law that intensity 1 over intensity 2 is equal to the distance 2 squared divided by distance 1 squared. So, class, again, um, we have to remember yung kapartner ni 1 should be dapat nasa ilalim. Kasi ganun lang yun sa relationship. Yung isa, kailangan kung, kung mapagmataas na yung isa, kailangan mag-lower mag down, mag down, mag down daw kasi para mag-stay daw longer. Alam ko yun. Okay, so, si intensity 2, yung partner niya, pag nasa baba si intensity 2, yung partner niya is nasa itaas. Okay, so, for our convenience, we have always to find for the uh, second variable. Kung makita niyo sa problem, if meron na siyang intensity, tapos may distance, somatic na yun. Siya na si intensity 1 at saka si distance 1. So, hahanapin nyo na lang yung second variable, either intensity 2 or distance 2. Okay, so in our uh, equation, intensity 1 is the intensity at distance 1 from the source and intensity 2 is the intensity at distance 2 from the source. Kaya nga sabi ko, matik na yun. Pag may magpares dyan, pag sa isang problem, may magkapares na variable. So, si intensity 1 at saka si distance 1 na yun. Okay, so hahanapin nyo na lang either si intensity 2 or distance 2. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Okay, so kuha ulit ng papel, ng lapis at saka or ball pen. Tapos sagutin natin ang sample problem. So the dose rate from a radiation source is 200 millirentgen per hour at a distance of 2 meters. So what will be the dose rate if a person moves 1 meter nearer to the source? Okay, sige. Bigyan ko kayo ng 15 minutes. Charot. Hindi naman pwede. We cannot do that kasi um, tipid-tipid tayo sa data, no? So, here in our problems, we have our variables 200 millirentgen per hour at distance of 2 meters. So, sanabi ko kanina, pag may nakita kayong magpares, so may intensity at saka may distance, so matik na yun. Intensity 1 at saka si distance 1. So, one met, uh, what will be the dose rate if a person moves 1 meter nearer to the source? So, ito, solo variable siya. So, so di distance 2 na siya. So, in our problem, we are going to find for the intensity 2. 
Ano? So, our equation, uh, we can derive that uh, to find for intensity 2. So, we can derive from the inverse square law in which our formula will be intensity 2 equals intensity 1 quantity distance 1 over distance 2 raised to the power of 2. Okay? So, substitute natin. So, intensity 1 is 200 millirentgen per hour. Tapos, si distance 1 is 2 meters. At saka, si distance 2 is 1 meter. Okay? So, sabi natin, uh, as uh, the person moves closer or nearer to the radiation source, the higher is the radiation dose. So, sa ating problem, we have to expect that our answer will sh or should be higher than 200 millirentgen per hour. So, again, Intensity 2 equals 200 millirentgen per hour, quantity 2 meters, divided by 1 meter raised to the power of 2. So, 2 times 2, gagamit pa yan ng calculator. 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 1 is, o oh, gagamit pa siya, 1. Okay, so 4 divided by 1 is of course 4. So, 4 times 200, our answer is, okay, very good class. Ang galing talaga ng mga BSRT3 students. Kahit hindi ko nakikita, alam ko magaling siya. Okay, palakpakan naman siya. Okay, so, now, what about, may makita kayong problem that talks about distance tapos meron siyang accompanying unit of time? Hmm, magandang katanungan yan. Kasi in the cardinal principles of radiation protection, we have to consider, of course, the time, the distance, and the shielding. Kasi all of these uh, principles or cardinal principles uh, are expected to produce a lower radiation dose. So, what if yung problem meron siyang distance at saka meron pa siyang time? Ano yung kayang dapat natin gawin? Okay, so take uh, this uh, as an example. Okay, so if the exposure rate at 3 feet from the fluoroscopic table is 40 millirentgen per hour, what will be the exposure for 30 minutes at a distance of 5 feet from the table? So ito yung sinasabi ko. Meron siyang intensity, meron siyang distance, meron din siyang time. So now, this is a combination of inverse square law and the working time equation. Okay, so ito yung gagawin natin. Una, gamitin muna natin yung distance with respect to the inverse square law. But if you want to try... Oh, explore, explore, kasi we have limited time na. If you want to explore, gamitin muna yung working time, tapos um, gamitin na si inverse square law, pwede din naman yun. Walang problema. Okay. So, uh, tapos, gamitin natin, of course, again, kasi sa cardinal principles, kailangan, we have to consider time, distance, and shielding. Okay, so, inverse square law, then the working time equation. So, yung ginawa natin, so, una, we have to substitute our um, variables. So, we're going to find for intensity 2 with respect sa distance. So, 40, uh, 40 millirentgen siya per hour sa distance na 3 feet. Tapos, nag-move siya ng 5 feet. So, we have to expect that the radiation intensity should be less kasi nag-move siya further. Ano? So, kailangan mas maliit siya sa 40 millirentgen per hour. Okay. So, intensity 2 equals 40 millirentgen per hour. Distance 1 is 3 feet. And distance 2 is 5 feet. Raised to the power of 2. So, 3 times 3 is 9. And 5 times 5 is 25. So, 9 divided by 25. So, that will give you a value of 0.36 or 0.36. So, i-multiply muna siya sa intensity 1. So, at uh, the, a distance of 5 feet, our dose rate is, uh, our exposure rate is 14.4 millirentgen per hour. Pero hindi pa, siya, hindi pa pa dyan nag, nagtatapos yung problem natin kasi mag stay lang daw siya doon for 30 minutes. So, ano kaya ang magiging exposure niya? So, uh, using the working time equation, so, x equals x rate 
multiply by time. So, 14.4 milliRent again per hour times 30 minutes. So, we have to uh, convert 30 minutes in terms of hours kasi yung dose rate natin nasa hours. So, 30... 30 minutes, okay. For every, one, uh, for every one hour, there are 60 minutes. So, 30 divided by 60, that will give you 0.5 hours. So, 14.4 milliRent again per hour times 0.5 hours. So, that will give you very good. 7.2 milliRent again. So, na-cancel na yung hours, ha? Okay, so, may tanong po ba? So, alam nyo na ako how to raise your question. Okay? So, that's all about the distance. So, ano yung implication natin? Ah, nandito pa si time. So, uh, distance of course. So, alam natin sa radiography, we have to uh, use the highest possible SID. Uh -oh. So, we have to entertain highest distance possible uh, with respect to the patient at saka sa source of radiation. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so before pal uh, okay, so now we have okay, remember we have to minimize time, we have to maximize distance and of course we have to maximize shielding. Uh -uh. So, pag pumupunta ka ng isang war, kailangan may panangga ka sa mga kalaban. Okay, so sabi nga natin, in this COVID-19 pandemic kailangan meron tayong face mask or most probably face shield. So, positioning shielding between the radiation source and the exposed persons greatly reduces the level of radiation exposure. So, shielding should be used diagnost in re diagnostic radiology usually consists of lead, although conventional building materials also are used. Okay, so if you are in a fixed uh, diagnostic radiography, so meron tayong operating console. Kita nyo naman, concrete siya, di ba, yung walling. But what about if pupunta ka ng portable, like sa OR or sa ward or sa room ng patient? Uh, hindi naman nating pwedeng dalhin yung, ano, yung concrete wall. Tapos doon tayong perform ng uh, radio, uh, radiography. Ano? So, we have to use uh, lead gowns. Like yung nakikita nyo sa illustration. Okay. So, sabi nga, may mga nabasa ako sa Facebook, Radtech daw, um, minsan, siya yung nagiging most powerful employee ng hospital. Paano yan? Ganito yung class, based on my experience. Uh, tatawagin kayo for portable x-ray, punta kayo ng ward. Okay, or, halimbawa sa operating room, busy yung mga tao doon. Sabihin nyo na lang yung one magic word. Shooting! Ha, kita nyo, uh, magtatago yan kahit saan kasi takot yan sa radiation. Uh, tayo yung mag mag nagiging powerful. Of course, meron tayong shielding dyan eh. Meron tayong lead. Hindi pa yan yung PPE ha. Meron tayong lead gown. Kaya, akala nila, yun, uh, protected tayo. But again, we have to maximize shielding ha. Uh, uh, I-practice natin. Ngayon pa lang, practice natin. Diba Kate? We have to practice that uh, we have to put uh, 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 okay, lead gown or abdominal shield when we pro, uh, do perform portable x-rays. Or, kung meron kayong, or, uh, may kasamang uh, relative inside the x-ray room, i-practice nyo na na bibigyan nyo siya ng lead gown as part of our shielding materials. So here, the amount that a protective barrier reduces radiation intensity can be estimated if the half-value layer or the tenth-value layer of the barrier material is known. The half-value layer of an X-ray beam is the thickness of an absorbing material necessary to reduce the X-ray intensity to half of its original value. So we have a given... Uh, 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 quantity, ano? 1 TVL is equivalent to 3.3 HVL. So, class, if you can still remember half-life, that this is uh, the specific span of time that the radiation intensity will be reduced to one half. Parang ganun din yung mangyayari sa HVL. Kaya lang, sa HVL, we are talking about the thickness of the material. 
to reduce the intensity to one half of its original value. Let's say for example, yung uh, example lang ha, the aluminum, a thickness of 2.5, magre-reduce na siya ng uh, intensity to 50%. Then uh, on top of 2.5, naglagay pa rin tayo ng 2.5, so magre-reduce na siya ng 25%. Another layer, uh, yan, parang ganun yung mangyayari, no? If you still remember, sa half-life, meron tayong range. First half-life, second half-life, third half-life. Ganon dito sa HVL. HV, first HVL, second. If you can uh, put uh, a, uh, a column for thickness, mas maganda. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Okay, so kuha ko yung ulit ng papel, ng ball pen or lapis, tapos magsosolve tayo. Okay, so here's the problem. A 2.5 centimeter lead material was found to reduce the intensity of the beam to 50% of its original value. How many HVLs are required in order to reduce the intensity of a beam of monoenergetic photons to less than 20% of its original value? So, um, tandaan ulit. Kung ano yung formula natin sa half-life, ganun din yung gagamitin natin dito sa HVL. Kung naalala nyo pa, mayroon tayong column dito for uh, half-life. So, we have to replace na lang with HVL. So, the intensity will be in um, by, by means of the percentage remaining. Okay, so, sa first HVL, we have to assume that the intensity will be reduced to 50% of its original value. So, divide nyo lang siya by 2%. The second HVL, so will be 25% na. Third HVL, divided again by 2, so 12.5%. So our problem, how many HVLs are required in order to reduce the intensity of a beam of monoenergetic photons to less than 20% of its original value? Then we can say, based on our illustration, based on our formula, we can say that we are required for three half-value layers para lower than 20% yung uh, energy ng photon. Nakuha? Okay, sige. Let's proceed. Sige. How many half-value layers are needed to reduce a dose rate of 4,000 millisievert per hour to 125 millisievert per hour? Okay. So, ganun din yung approach natin. Ano? So, for HVL, so, we have to use our table. So, intensity. So, sa first HVL, we are, we are to expect that the intensity is now 50% lesser than the original. So, from 4,000, magiging 2,000 na lang siya. So, the second HVL, so, divide again by 2, from 2,000 naging 1,000. Sa third, so on and so forth. So, therefore, based sa ating table or sa illustration, again, how many HVLs are needed to reduce a dose rate of 4,000 millisievert per hour to 125 millisievert per hour? So, that is 5 half-value layers. Nakuha? Okay, sige. So, if you have uh, questions, don't hesitate. Ha? We have different platforms. So, uh, pwede nyo gawin doon. Okay, sige. At this point in time, um, I want to measure if you really uh, or uh, may, may mga natutunan ba tayo in this uh, virtual classroom. So, let's take these review questions. Uh, okay, sige. What is the approximate dose reduction to the radiographer if the distance from the patient during fluoroscopy is doubled? So, what is your answer? Is it letter A, one half? Is it letter B, one fourth? Is it letter C, one eighth? Or letter D, one ninth? So, uh, imploring the use of the inverse square law in which um, I sub 1 over I sub 2 equals D sub 1 squared over D sub 2 squared. So, when we, when we double the distance, therefore, the intensity is reduced by 1 fourth. So, that is letter B. Okay? So, again, inverse square law. Distance siya, di ba? Next. Which term describes the amount of material required to reduce the intensity of beam by 50% of its original value? Is it letter A, LD5030, 
Is it letter B, half-life? Is it letter C, half-value layer? Or letter D, 50% rule? Okay, so if uh, na-recall nyo kanina with respect to shielding, so amount of shielding, okay, so material. So shielding, so it is letter C, half-value layer. Kasi yung uh, lethal dose, 50%, diba, this is the dose necessary to... Uh, or lethal dose, uh, 50% of the population to die in 30 days. Half-life, this is about the time. Sa 50% rule naman, um, the, the change in KVP with respect to MAS. So therefore, our answer is letter C, half-value layer. Next. Dose rate multiplied by exposure time. So rate, tapos my time. So is it letter A, dose? Letter B, distance? Letter C, exposure? Okay, so letter D, height. So, kasi dose siya, dose. Dose rate, tapos time. So, therefore, dose ang answer. Okay? Next item. So, the exposure rate to a body 2 meters from the source of radiation is 28 rentgen per hour. So, what distance would be necessary to decrease to uh, 7 rentgen per hour? So, from 28, naging 7. So, therefore, nag-increase na siya ng distance. Ano? So, therefore, hindi na pwede. E, kes na natin si 2 at saka si 1. So, we are going to solve. So, if you so if you have your calculator, you may do that using the inverse square law. So, we're going to find for distance 2 squared. Which, uh, distance 2 squared, or the square root of distance 2 squared is equivalent to the square root of distance 1 squared, quantity intensity 1 over intensity 2. So, our intensity 1 is 28 rentgen per hour divided by 7 rentgen per hour. So, that will give you 4. Ano? So, our distance 1 naman is uh, 2 meters. So, that is raised to the power of 2. So, 2 times 2 is 4 meters squared. So, 4 meters squared times 4 is 16 meters squared. So, find the square root of 16 uh, meters squared. So, that will give you 4 meters. Okay? So, very good. Next item. So, a radiologic technologist is doing a work with a radiation source that delivers a dose rate of 25 millisievert per hour. So, how long can he work without exceeding the dose limit of 0.20 millisievert? So, kung naalala nyo kanina, our formula for to, to find the time is uh, exposure equals... Uh, no, no. Time equals uh, exposure divided by the exposure rate. So, our exposure is 0 0.20. 0 0.20 millisievert. So, since pareha naman yung unit, 20 uh, millisievert saka millisievert, so, automatic na tayo mag-divide. No? 0.20 millisievert divided by 25. So, it will give you 0 0.008. But that is in the in terms of hours. Yung choices natin are all in terms of seconds. So convert mo 0 0.008 hours to seconds. So to do that, diba, for every one hour, there are 60 minutes. And for every one minute, there are 60 seconds. So 60 times 60. So therefore, for every one hour, there are 3,600 seconds. So therefore, 0 0.008 times... 3,600. So, that will give you, ayun, 28.8 seconds. So, our answer is letter A. Okay. Sige. So, that ends my lecture for today. And I hope, kahit virtual classroom lang tayo, may mga nakuha kayong uh, inputs, which is, uh, will be applicable, not just uh, while you are still BSRT students, but uh, magagamit nyo with a practice uh, when you emerge or become a radiologic technologist yourself. Okay, so that ends for to, uh, our lesson for today. So uh, thank you so much for watching. 
And if you have concerns, do not hesitate. You may reach me through different platforms, through our Facebook Messenger group chat, of course, through our e-learning portal that is in the Moodle, and of course, you can reach me through text or uh, by commenting your questions in these YouTube videos. So that will be all for today. Thank you so much. God bless. Ingat palagi and bye-bye.